Welcome back. Today, let's discuss two important mathematical objects in quantum mechanics, the Kronecker delta and the Dirac delta. These two objects are introduced quite early on in the quantum mechanics course, and students are sometimes asked to prove certain mathematical properties of them. But I've seen very few times that the students are being asked to interpret these two mathematical objects using their physical intuition. So today, Let's think about what these objects actually mean in quantum mechanics. So in order for us to gain some physical intuition, let's start off with a game scenario. So let's say Isabel is playing a game with James, and the game rule is as follows. There are five inverted cups, and Isabel has to place the die in one of these cups without telling James. And then James has to guess the right cup, which contains the die to win the game. And Isabel can place the die in any of the five cups. So let's label uh, the cup Isabel chose with variable i. And because James can choose any cups as well to guess where the die is, let's label James's guess with variable j. And we can denote the outcome of the game in James's perspective as either he wins the game or he doesn't win the game. So the game rule can be restated uh, mathematically as if variable i and j matches, James win. If variable i and j are not the same, James doesn't win. And the Kronecker delta is this mathematical object that encodes the outcome of this game. And the Kronecker delta is defined in the exact same way. When delta is 1, meaning James win a game. If delta equals to 0, meaning James doesn't win. So Kronecker delta is 1 when i equals to j and Kronecker delta is zero when i is not the same as j. And of course, it is completely arbitrary that we allowed Isabel to go first for her to hide the die in one of these cups. And we can switch it around. So James can hide the die and Isabel to guess, which means the Kronecker delta has this uh, symmetrical property that uh, delta ij equals to delta ji. The Kronecker delta is the same when you swap the two indices around. So let's uh, spice up the game a bit more. Let's remove these cups and allow Isabel to place the die on a perfectly linear path uh, that goes from negative infinity to infinity. And for the sake of simplicity, let's ask Isabel to place the die at the origin. And we ask James to close his eye and guess where the die is on this linear path. And James doesn't know anything about the location of this die. So you have to make some educated guesses. For example, he knows that if he represents the location of the die as a probability density function, as a function of the position of the die on this line from negative infinity to infinity, and then he integrates this probability density function, he should get one. Because this die must be somewhere on this line, James also knows that if you guess the wrong location, uh, this probability function is going to be zero. And if you guess the right location, this probability density function is non-zero. And the Dirac delta is this mathematical objects defined in this way, such that the integral over the Dirac delta from negative infinity to infinity is exactly one. And it is zero everywhere except at one point, which is the origin, which is zero in this case. And for the integral to be 1 and the function to be non-zero at one point, the function must be infinity at that non-zero point. So we can hope that the integral integrates to 1. But this is just too unrigorous and contradicting. So let's think about why the Dirac delta is defined in this contradicting way. And the reason is as follows. Whenever you measure the position of something, you must use a measuring instrument. For example, you can use ruler, you can use vernier calipers if you want to be a bit more precise, and you can use micrometers if you want to be even more precise. But the point I'm trying to make is that no matter how precise your instrument is, there's always uncertainty associated with that measurement. For example, let's say you represent the location of an object with some sort of Gaussian, and of course it has some sort of standard deviation depending on how precise your measurement is. 
and if your measurement is very precise, the standard deviation associated with that Gaussian or that normal distribution is not very big. And if your measurement is very imprecise, the standard deviation associated with that Gaussian is very large. But it is not possible to have a measuring instrument with zero uncertainty. Therefore, Isabel can never be certain that the die is perfectly at the origin. It's always at the origin, plus or minus small amount of uncertainty. And the contradiction between reality and ideality, which are states of certainty in quantum mechanics, are reflected in the mathematical definition of the Dirac delta. And if you interpret the Dirac delta as the probability density in this case, it has to have a probability density of infinity at where the die is. And this is analogous to the idea of point charge in electromagnetism, that the charge density of a point charge at one point is infinity and zero everywhere else. And we know that point charge do not exist in reality, but a mathematical abstraction. Sim similar to these quantum states of certainty, which again is a mathematical abstraction and do not exist in reality. So for now, we can treat the Dirac delta as a Gaussian, which has its standard deviation tending to zero. And in terms of quantum mechanics, Dirac delta and Kronecker delta describes the orthonormality of two quantum states. So if you think abstractly, if you think the quantum state of certainty is a unit vector in this arbitrarily high dimensional space. The Kronecker delta says that when the two quantum states are distinct, um, they are in a sense perpendicular to each other, and the dot product, the inner product, is zero, because the projection of one quantum state of certainty on another distinctly different quantum state is exactly nothing. And it is one when the two quantum states are the same states. In other words, uh, when a particle is at one position. So quantum data is simply the overlap of two quantum states of certainty when a variable is discrete. And the direct delta is the continuous version of the Kronecker delta. It is again the overlap of two quantum states of certainty, but only this time the variable is continuous. So when the two quantum states of certainty are different, the inner product um, is nothing, and the two quantum states are perpendicular to each other. But when the two quantum states are the same, this inner product goes to infinity, because it means that you're certain that the particle has this amount of energy, when the energy is uh, continuous, or you're certain that the particle has this much momentum, or is at this position in space. And this is only a very brief introduction to Dirac delta, and we used the limit of a Gaussian as a mathematical representation of the Dirac delta. But Dirac delta have other mathematical forms. For example, I can have a Fourier series representation, which is a discussion for another time. So in this video, we used uh, this game scenario to illustrate this contradiction between ideality and reality and how that is reflected in the mathematical definition of the Dirac delta, and how Dirac delta is ultimately uh, a description of the orthonormality of two quantum states of certainty when their variable is continuous. And for the next video, we'll discuss about quantum harmonic oscillators. So stay tuned, and thanks for watching.